The answer to 1984 is 1776. Pastor Lindsey Williams joins us. No, this isn't yesterday's show. He's back with us today, the 23rd day of February, 2011, on this Wednesday edition. We're going to go into overdrive in the fourth hour live with the good old fella from the Corbett Report. So uh, it'll be his maiden voyage with us here on air, James Corbett. Really looking forward to that. Okay, I asked Lindsay yesterday to go back and first do the history of this deal being set up in the 1970s with the Arabs to have them buy our T-bills or the globalist T-bills. The Federal Reserve would hijack things by then completely. And that then the federal government would try to restrict oil exploration and development and, 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 and delivery. And we know in about half the country is held in federal hands, and that's where most of the oil is, Alaska, Utah, Rocky Mountains, areas of Texas. They just shut it down. That's on record. And I got emails and questions. Uh, people uh, thought it was phenomenal and also frightening information, but it's good to know what's happening from Lindsay's inside sources. One who's now deceased, Ken Fromm, former head of uh, operations, Atlantic Richfield, the other guy, former CEO of a company, oil company, all uh, of a big three. Just, we can't say his name. He's, he's still alive and gave Lindsay news just three, four days ago on this. That's the new info. And how they're going to double cross the Arabs. And I got emails saying, how is that a double cross? Well, if you make a behind the scenes deal back with Henry Kissinger in the 70s, that we're going to stop the Americans from getting the oil. So we need it from you. But then you've got to invest it with us. See, if they let free market companies go in, they couldn't do a sweetheart deal and order those companies to buy nothing but T-bills. But by going to dictatorships run by you know, corrupt people like Hussein Mubarak, run by corrupt people, uh, you know, like in Saudi Arabia, the royal family, Bahrain, the list goes on and on. Uh, Yemen, uh, by doing that, then they could have that inside deal and control the price. And Lindsay again told four months ago that this double cross was coming. Now he's been given all the info and it's happening. That's the double cross. Because when they stop buying stuff from the Arabs and claim it's because, uh, you know, oh, it's so destabilized. That will give them the excuse to start development here. And it will also depeg uh, oil worldwide from the dollar and will signal an acceleration of the death of the dollar. And as inside sources said, that no, it's going to be at the end of 2012. Many other experts say this year, early next year, whatever. We're go it's a freight train going over the edge of a cliff. And it's a mathematical certainty. Every economist, Mark Faber, Ron Paul's an economist, not just a medical doctor. He's been given you know uh, honorary degrees from uh, facilities for papers he's written. The point is, uh, uh, Webster Tarpley, economist, doctor of history, uh, Dr. Paul Craig Roberts, former head of uh, the Treasury Department policy, number two, father of Reaganomics. I mean, I could, uh, George Humphrey, former city council member, economist. The real mark of an economist is how successful he is in business, but I won't get into that. Ooh, let me tell you, uh, <laughs> he's a humble guy. They all, uh, Humphrey told me this in 1998. He produced audio CDs off his book. What do you call it? Common Sense. I remember listening to it, driving around in the car, and having him on the radio show about the derivatives and the tens of trillions and what it would do and how it was a setup. So the, the point is we're now entering the danger zone. It's here. It's V2. It's point of no return. Again, V2 is when you're taking off in a jet on a runway. The point where there's not enough runway to stop, you're going to crash. you got to go ahead and try to take off. You're V2. We're now entered V2. We're in V2. And so I wanted to get Lindsay up to explain this, but also I got another email saying, well, wait a minute. Some of what I heard Lindsay say, it, it wasn't new. This is the one-dimensional thinking people nitpick on. They go, uh, here's an article, a text of what William said years ago, uh, and it's the same thing. Yeah, that's the whole point. We got him to give me the whole history and to go over his book, The Energy Non-Crisis, published in 1980. We said that 45 million times. Let's be technical, probably 60, 70 times yesterday. Yes, that's the old info that integrates with the new info that's now here. But now we're not going to go back into the past, except for Ken Fromm and a speech he gave with Lindsay and the threats at the time in the early 80s, to understand what's happening now. And then more of what his still-living source and from just three months ago before he died, told him about the relationship with China, what was going to happen in America. But uh, here we are. We're going to talk about 20 minutes with Lindsay getting into the other areas he hasn't covered. Then we're going to open the phones up for phone calls for questions for Lindsay Williams at 800-259-9231. But we're limited in time. If you call up, we don't screen your calls. But if you bring up something else, we've got to let you go because Lindsay's here right now for this purpose. Uh, but Lindsay Williams, great to have you back with us. 
Alex, thank you. The standard currency of the world is crude oil, and I think we can all see from what you just said that things are happening right now that that are unusual. Uh, in the course of the program today, I'm going to tell you exactly how much crude oil the United States of America has. I'll give you actual numbers of barrels, as they say, is in four different reserves. You'll readily understand. And this is from the insider. And, for them to do what they're doing. And while you were on yesterday, oil went up 9%. How much is it up today? Oil is somewhere around $10 up today. You will see at least... 25 to 30 cents increase at the gas pump, probably by the by next week. Lindsay, you're batting almost perfect here. Three and a half years ago, or three years ago, give me the dates exactly. We wrote articles about it. It's on record. You said it's going to go from $50 a barrel to 150 Did it. Now you said it's going to go down to 40 People laughed at you. Boom, did it right on time. Then you said we got two years till it starts rocketing back up. Then four months ago, you say it's going to 150 or even 200 within six months to a year. Boom, it's begun. I mean, look, I know the name of the former oil company CEO, one of the big three, who you're talking to is still alive. This is real info, unless he's giving us dis info they could give you good info for a long time then give you a lie later that's the only way you could be wrong alex i am not a prophet uh, yes i'm a christian <laughs> i'm a minister of the gospel i am not a prophet it was by the providence of god that i met these people years ago gained their confidence two of them have kept in touch with me over the past 35 years and everything that you have just mentioned that i have told was told to me by one of these whom i call the elite of the world now, let's begin, as you did in the program today, 1977 through 1981. An agreement was made by the then Secretary of State with the OPEC oil-producing countries of the world, in particular the Middle East. They had found oil there about 60 years ago. Each one of the major oil companies, Shell, Texaco, Standard Oil, Chevron, divided up the Arab world, and each one of them produced an oil field. Then, of course, they became the, the elite, the, the, the ones that had the most and doing the most. Then Henry Kissinger comes along as Secretary of State, goes to those countries that had been produced by the major oil companies. Read the book, The Three Sisters, if you'd like background on all of this. And he said, I want to cut you a deal. We will be glad to buy your oil and not produce American oil. This is so important, what you've just said. This is the key to the whole thing. We will not produce America's oil fields. They know it's there. I'm going to tell you how much is there later in the program. But they said, we will not produce America's oil fields. We will buy oil from you if you will take a certain portion of everything that we buy oil from you with and buy our key bills, our Federal Reserve issues. Can you see at this point, everybody out there in the listening audience, I beg of you, realize that the crisis of money and the financial situation and the depression that we're in right now, or recession as they call it, every bit of this was in the works and planned way back in the 70s. They knew about it even in the 60s, what they were going to do. And you wrote about it 31 years ago, but, uh, no, excuse me, you wrote about it 1971, man, time flies. That's almost 40 years ago. And so uh, looking at this, uh, Lindsay, because we've already covered that yesterday, just explain to people how that's a double cross. Some of them don't understand what you just said, even though it's as plain as a barn door. Now, the crisis that took place in Egypt, uh, they predicted it to me, and I gave it on your show. Alex, please tell the audience, I gave this on your show Back four months ago, I was told that within four to five months, there would be a major crisis in the Middle East. I announced it on your show, and it took place in Egypt was the beginning of it. Alex, do you remember me saying that? Yes, I do. But, but Lindsay, just quantify it for folks that, that haven't read your book, because I, I guess, it, it, I mean, it is complex. Explain how it's a double cross. I mean, if they stop buying the Arabs oil and develop it here, that's going to totally send the Middle East, who's on welfare, into a tailspin, because they've had the oil money to produce a giant population, but they can't grow their own food. True. Now, what they did was they created this crisis, and it's going to spread all over the Middle East. Uh, Gaddafi right now is saying that Libya, if, if he's ousted, that he will destroy all the oil fields in Libya before he leaves. 1.6 million barrels a day that goes to Europe. 
You know what this is going to do, the price of crude oil? This is spreading. It was Egypt. Now it's Libya. It'll go right on to every one of the Middle East oil-producing countries, Jordan, Tunisia, Turkey, Saudi Arabia, every single one of them, Yemen. They're all going to see riots, and this will bring about or will precipitate the, the production of oil in the Middle East will cease as we know it today. Now, this is very important. Because at this point, can you imagine what will happen to the price of oil when Saudi Arabia says we can no longer supply for the United States of America because we have riots and civil unrest in our country? This will bring the price of crude oil and uh, the price of gasoline at the gas pump in America to 6 7 8 maybe even $10 a gallon at the gas pump if you can even get it. What is this going to do to the American dollar? I was told that the dollar will be dead by the end of 2012. How does this relate to the Arab oil world? Because the, the oil-producing countries of the world, uh, with the exception of Iran and Iraq, have been buying our debt. They've been buying our T-bills, our Federal Reserve issues. They've been buying them since way back in 19 and And so they won't be able to buy as many. Made. They won't be able to buy as many. That will further weaken the dollar. They won't be selling as much oil. That will further hurt their economies, and it'll cause a domino effect. And that's breaking the deal the globalists made with them on the 70s. That's the double cross. Correct, Lindsay? That is correct, and when they when they can't produce over there, and in America we have financial problems to the point that the Federal Reserve key bill, the uh, well, tell you what, Lindsay, got... stay there. Let's accelerate to the rise of China and what you were told on that, and how it integrates into the U.S. Their plans for us. Stay with us. Summing it up, the info we didn't have time to get into on the rise of China, what the globalists are going to do to the U.S., uh, the oil that they're going to open up and where, how much of it there is, directly from this former Big Three oil company CEO. Then I want to come back and go back in time to the information you've never been able to talk about with Ken Fromm, uh, dealing with that speech you gave with him. Again, all this was hiding in plain view. Uh, Lindsay, please continue. The civil unrest in the Middle East is going to grow worse and worse. It will go from one nation to the other. I know that many of you probably are having a difficult time understanding exactly how this is going to be a double cross with the Arabs. And please let me try to put it simply if I can, because this is new to you. It was new to me until I received it a few days ago. Uh, the, the OPEC oil producing countries have been buying our T-bills as an agreement that was waived me back in the 70s. At the time that the dollar collapses, and you know this is going to happen, uh, it's been said by the Economist of America, I have been told it'll happen by the end of 2012. Do you realize that all of that paper that those uh, oil-producing countries of the Middle East have, that they have been buying by obligation of an agreement made back in the 70s, do you realize that all of that paper will become worthless overnight? Now, watch the chain of events. As the Middle East conf conflict and unrest continues from Libya to all of the others, including Saudi Arabia. At that point, they cannot produce the oil to send it to America and to the rest of the world, not only America, but to the rest of the world. Right now, Libya supplies 1.6 million barrels to Europe. That was cut off. It's going to be cut off because Gaddafi is on his way out. Now, when Saudi Arabia can't supply it to America, what happens to the American dollar? Whenever gasoline goes to 8 to 10 to 12 dollars a gallon, if you can even get it, what happens to the economy when the groceries go up? That means that the American dollar is on its way out and will collapse. When it collapses, all of the paper that these oil producing, OPEC oil producing countries have in the way of T bills and Federal Reserve issues will be worthless overnight. What does that bring about? That means then that they have been double crossed. The man that called you from Egypt on yesterday on the program, Alex, he said that the people in Egypt know that what took place uh, in Cairo was staged. They thought it was staged by the CIA. I'll tell you who it's staged by. It was staged by the people who give me this information. They told me four to five months in advance, and I announced it on Alex Jones' show, that it would happen. Now, I'm telling you it's going to spread. It'll spread to the point that they can't produce their oil. They won't be able to provide it to us. And by the end of 2012, you will see their paper become worthless. They will be livid. They will be so angry against America. Now, how is this going to affect what takes place over here? Here is the plan of the elite. 
they in turn will begin to open up America's oil fields that they have known for years. They have known for 20 to 30 years they existed. They're going to open these oil fields and produce from America's own soil. Why? Because Mr. Fromm said to me back in 1976, never forget the conversation. He said, Chaplain, we will not open the Gull Island oil field and produce it for the American people until we have gotten the price of crude oil to to 150 to $200 a barrel. They will have it $200 a barrel before the end of 2012. In turn, they will become the filthiest rich people you could ever imagine because they'll open America's own oil fields because at that point, the Middle East can't provide for us. The Arabs have been double-crossed. They realize what's happened to them and that they have been had. Their paper is worthless. The oil producers now produce for America's own soil, but watch what happens to China. This is so important. You remember I said to you nearly two years ago that I had been told China is the big one. You said first the Middle East will flare up, then you won't be watching, but China will be then the big one. China's going to be the big one, and China will not be affected at all. Please notice this. China will not be affected at all by the crisis that's going to take place in crude oil because China and Russia made an agreement just a matter of weeks ago that Russia, who, by the way, as of last year, Russia surpassed Saudi Arabia in oil production as the number one producer in the world because of their super deep wells, which is a story within itself, that BP tried to uh, imitate the Gulf of Mexico and couldn't. And now China won't be affected at all because Russia has an agreement that they will supply all of the crude oil and natural gas, not just crude oil. But natural gas also. So China natural. and Russia rising, the U.S. in turmoil, global police state in place, Europe rising. I think I've read this in a book written 2,000 years ago. Oh, Lindsey Williams is our guest. I want to go to your phone calls. Uh, yesterday, of course, we were honored to have Lindsey with us for an hour and a half and really give him the floor for large 10-minute chunks to give you the history. Now the latest developments. Now today we're rushing to get to the new information and then what the elite told him uh, the master plan is. Now, going beyond the rise of Russia and China, what else did they tell you about this? Because you wanted to tell the other night when we talked, and I just sat there and listened, this decline of the U.S. that's planned, but then they plan to rise it back up again. That is so important. Tell us, tell us the long-term strategic geopolitical ramifications. Well, because of the civil unrest over the Middle East, they will basically be impotent. I mean, they, they will not be able to produce. We begin to produce from our own soil. Alex, we were able to obtain, just within the past 24 hours, a, a, a uh, visual, uh, not only audio, but visual soundbite of the Muslim Brotherhood during one of these uh, sessions, in, in, I think it was in Egypt, uh, where they actually were crying out, we are going to Israel to kill Jews. Uh, it literally sent cold chills up and down my spine uh, when we got this. And you, you've got to see what's going on. Now, what's going to happen, basically, is we will begin to produce from our own oil fields. And I want to give in a moment, if I can, how much oil we have, known reserves. But we'll be beginning to produce now from our own oil fields. Anybody in the oil business, you're going to get filthy rich. Anybody in the drilling business, get ready. Get all the equipment you can get. They, when the Middle East can no longer provide, the American dollar collapses, the Arabs become extremely angry at us, they have lost their wealth in their T-bills and Federal Reserve issues, we in turn begin to produce from our own oil fields, and then at this point, the New World Order basically has everything to where they want it. You've heard me say before that I was told that when the, when the dust settles, they will own every piece of mortgage real estate in the United States of America because people can't make their payments. When the price of crude oil goes to $200 a barrel, you're paying uh, $7 and $8 a gallon at the gas pump. You're going to see this, by the way. Gasoline in our area went up 3 to $0.05 cents per day last week right here in Arizona. It's over $4 a gallon in California already. I saw $4 a gallon for diesel when I was in town the other day right here in Arizona. You will easily see 6 7 to $8 a gallon. Think of what this is going to do to the economy. And when the economy gets to that point, you can't make your house payment. They can't make the payment on that shopping center. 
people won't be able to buy. They'll barely be able to buy food. We'll be relegated to a third world status. At this point, the elite basically will break the back of the American free enterprise system. This is their goal because they only buy things after they've bankrupted it when they can get it for pennies on the dollar. The airlines, the railroads, no matter what it may be, their goal is total control. The name of the game is control. Then we produce from our own oil fields. Whenever they open up all of these massive oil fields in America, the elite will gradually, over a period of years, now not overnight, but over a period of years, they'll begin to bring America back again to the great American dream under their control. It'll be a different world than what we know it today. Their plan is to bring it back again. And whenever they do, they will give us back some of what we have now, just enough to be able to keep the people exactly where they want them. Now, if I can, Alex, may I give a little bit of what we have in the way of crude oil, and I want to tell you the places where they're going yes. to produce it. Yes, Lindsay, go ahead. Okay. Uh, first of all, the U.S. Geological... Now, folks, please, you can prove this for yourself. You'll have no trouble getting this information. The U.S. Geological Service issued a report on April of 2008 that only scientists and oil men uh, knew were coming. They didn't have the slightest idea up until that time. It was a revised report, hadn't been issued since 1995, on how much oil was in the area of the western two-thirds of North Dakota, western South Dakota, and Montana. Here it is. The Bakken is the largest oil discovery since Prudhoe Bay and has the potential of eliminating all American dependence on foreign oil. You don't want to go back and write much of this down afterwards. The Energy Information Administration estimated that the Bakken Reserve is 503 billion barrels. Even if just 10% of the oil is recovered, at $107, which it won't be at that point, by the way, I'll add, it'll be $200 a barrel, because this report was back a number of years ago. He said, we're looking at a resource base worth $5.3 trillion. Folks, do you realize that would pay off all of the national debt at $200 a barrel? Let me continue. Uh, when I was first briefed on this, uh, Terry Johnson said, he's a Montana legislative financial analyst, uh, he said that he gave this, by the way, it's in the congressional record. He said the congressman almost dropped their, their lower jaw. Here it is. This sizable find is now the highest producing onshore oil field in the past 56 years, the Pittsburgh uh, Post Gazette said. It is a formation known as the Williston Basin. Now you'll hear the Bakken. You'll also hear the words Williston Basin. It is more commonly referred to as the Bakken. It stretches from northern Montana through North Dakota into Canada. For years, the U.S. oil exploration, they have known it's there. This is no surprise to the elite. They knew, the major oil companies knew it is there. Now they have the technology. May I tell you what it is? Uh, this, this was just in this report the other day that this gentleman gave me. He said, this is light, sweet crude. Do you know what that means? They have two different kind of oils. Yes, uh, well, there's crude oil, and then there's sweet, and then there's the light sweet. You can basically almost not even process or refine light sweet. It can almost go right in the engine. That's correct. With just a little filtration, you could put it right into a diesel engine. The light sweet crude and the back and oil reserve is light sweet crude, and it can be produced. Are you ready? Hold on. It can be produced for six. $16 per barrel on our own soil. That is 60 cents a gallon at the gas pump if the elite would give it to you. Did you hear those figures? But you won't get it for that. You'll get it for 7 to $8 a gallon at the gas pump because crude oil by that time will be $200 a barrel. Now, may I go on? There's enough crude to fully full fuel the United States economy. Are you ready? Through the year 2041, straight from our own soil. And that's what's, already to dis that's, that's what's already discovered and on tap now. Yes, that is right there. They know it's there. There's even more. They're ready to tap it. Now, here's the next field they're going to open. It's called the Stanberry. Stanberry. And you'll find it in the Stanberry Report, which was issued on uh, April the 20th of 2006. Here's the report on it. 
Hidden 1,000 feet beneath the surface of the Rocky Mountains lies the largest untapped oil reserve in the world. It is more than 2 trillion barrels. Here's a report of how much you have there. there is, this report is stunning, and they're going to open this deal up when they get it to $200 a barrel. We have more oil inside our borders than all other proven reserves on Earth. Here they are. Eight times more oil than Saudi Arabia, 18 times more oil than Iraq, 21 times more oil than Kuwait, 22 times as much oil as Iran, 500 times as much oil as Yemen, and it's all right here on our own soil. James Bartis, one of the lead researchers within, in the study of how much oil we have, uh, he went on to say we have more than 2 trillion barrels untapped more than all the proven oil reserves of crude oil in the world. And this was written in the Denver Post. Now, they know it's there. I'll give you the other two places they're going to open up. They will open up Gull Island in Alaska. I was, my book, Energy Non Crisis, is the only place on the face of the earth that statistics and details are given on this. Uh, secondly, uh, fourth, I'm sorry, the fourth area will be the Arctic Wildlife Refuge. And whenever they open that, now, you say, we can't do that because the ecologists won't let us. Oh, yes, you will. By the time the ecologists don't have any food on their table, along with you not having food on your table, the dollar has collapsed, and the whole economy is in shambles, and the Federal Reserve has basically become a disgrace, and the Arabs have been swindled uh, and stripped out of all of the money that they spent on TVOs and Federal Reserve notes all of these years. At that point, the economy will be in such a condition, even an ecologist and a greenpeacer will be begging for these oil fields to be produced. And this is what I was given the other day by one of the elite and the entire story of what their plans are. You watch it unfold. More and more disruption in the Middle East. All across America, you're going to see problems, folks. This is coming to America. It's not right. just abroad. Yes, Lindsay, I've got, I've, I've got two quick questions, and then I want to go to the calls as we promised, and we'll obviously have to have you back up. But you were telling me that whenever you come on my show, it's like none other, that you've been co contacted by hundreds of other radio hosts in the last day. Uh, Alex, I think every radio talk show host in America listens to your show. And I'm not going to go a little bit further. I have not been contacted by Fox News or any of the liberal media, but... I think the liberal media is listening to your show every single day. Yesterday, I couldn't get away from my phone. Uh, finally, last night when it got dark, it quit ringing. I think every talk show host in the country is saying, oh, my gracious, you appeared on Alex Jones' show. We want you on ours, too. Folks, listen to what Alex Jones says. He's been listening to by the whole nation because they know he's telling the truth. Well, well I wasn't even trying to to toot my horn. I, I just wanted to point out that this is getting a lot of attention, and that's certainly positive, but it causes a catch-22. It'll be hard to get you back on. We need to probably pick an hour out next week to have you come back again because there's so much. You haven't even gotten into Ken Fromm and the speech. She gave I still the haven't told the show. story of Gull Island. I still haven't given what Ken Fromm told me that day. I still haven't told you how he was fired from Atlantic Richfield and then hired back. I haven't given the details of much of the North Slope of Alaska. I mean, this, this it goes so deep. Uh, but, yes, let's go on in whatever direction you'd like. Well, just, to. just very Before briefly because I, I promised it. Let me say one thing. Yep, yep, yep. Right now, right this second, while this program is going on, Providence, Rhode Island, the, the city of Providence is $40 million in deficit. Right this second, letters have been sent out this morning to every school teacher in Providence, Rhode Island, saying they're dismissed. Did you hear that? This morning, right now, while this program's going on, I got it just before the program this morning. Every school teacher in Providence, Rhode Island, has sent a letter saying they're dismissed, and if they try to do what they did in Wisconsin, they plan to dismiss them, lower the, the cost of, of schools, and this is going, folks, this is going to spread all over America, exactly what happened in the Middle East until the elite accomplish what they want in bringing in the new world order. Yeah, the there's, the, there's the article out of Providence. And, and, and what's the source on that, Jaron? You scroll down. Uh, that's out of the uh, projo.com. That's the, uh, the Providence Journal. Okay, got it. Thank you. Can't read it across the room. I need to put a bigger TV there. I got good eyes. A little bitty monitor over there. I'm going to read from here. Thank you, guys. And the Muslim Brotherhood is chatting. We have the, the video sound bite of this. Go to Israel and kill the Jews. Folks, this 
is going and to this is a quit. revolution funded by the federal government so they don't just destabilize the place this is so the globalists have an excuse to blow the daylights out of the extremists when they get in power yes exactly and and they every bit of this is planned i told i gave this four months ago on alex jones show that this Middle East crisis was going to develop. No, Lindsay, you did. We've, we've got to go to calls, and I've got to bring up these points. And then it's a catch-22 because people want to hear you, but then callers want to get on, and then I've got to have my questions here. But let's check the schedule. Uh, Lindsay, before your whole calendar gets filled, when can you come on next week for an hour? Uh, Alex, for you, I'll come on anytime. Jaron, uh, what about Wednesday uh, at 1230? Well, what do we got on the board there? Uh, well, let's just get, let's just get this going right now because obviously, because uh, I've talked to Lindsey off here and he's got so much more information. I guess I, I could just not take the calls, but I promise to. Uh, here's other two points. Here's Bloomberg: sustained oil price gain may cause U.S. recession. Leahy says. Uh, that's Bloomberg. We never left the recession, Lay, and you know it. Uh, so they're going to blame all this Arab stuff you see on the depression. And Lindsey said that four months ago. Uh, here's another one. Um, Where's my other report? I had one about T-bills not being bought. Here it is, just as you were saying earlier, Market Watch, uh, just out uh, literally 30 minutes ago. Treasury gives up gains after five-year auction, and it goes on to report a massive number of the U.S. Treasuries were not bought and will be monetized by the Federal Reserve. So that's more printing of money. I mean, this thing is unraveling fast, Lindsay. Are you sure that... People like Stan Porter Stansbury aren't right, and it could happen at the end of this year, or early next year. I mean, are you sure your elitist friend's right that it's total implosion by the end of 2012? I hope my elitist friends are correct, and it's the end of 2012, but I wouldn't bet on it the way that you're seeing things happen. They may have uh, they, they may have advanced their timeline. I have not been told that. But I'll say one thing, folks. You must get ready right now. You, you've got to make preparation. You need to get food in the house. You need to get out of paper. If it's, if it's written on paper, it's worth the paper it's written on. You need to make preparations right now, even though I have been told by well, the end of 2012. Don't wait that long. Well, if there was a 10 percent chance we were going to have Weimar style inflation I would get ready and I have and I did you know years ago because of this I mean I'm I've moved to the country I got a well I'm going on solar and uh, I'm getting ready I mean folks we're freaked out I believe everything I'm saying and and but let's just hope by the providence of God as 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 Lindsay says as Chaplain Williams says that we can fix this um, we're going to skip this break so I can get to all the calls network break station shouldn't play over this but whatever uh I, I, I'm just speechless at this point, and uh, it, it, it just makes me sick. Uh, my last question, and we're going to calls for you, Lindsay. In your discussions with Mr. L, the, the living CEO, uh, with him, did he say anything about Russia? Are they playing ball with the globalists, or is there real division there? Because we know that the globalists have been angry that they're producing so much oil and gas on record. Has that helped keep prices down? I mean, is Russia playing ball in all this? What's going on? Uh, I really don't know exactly the inner workings of Russia. All I know that I was told to watch China. It's the big one, and China and Russia are the ones that we need to keep our eyes on. And because of the agreement that Russia made with China in supplying it with all of their crude oil, that means that whenever the Middle East stops supplying it to us, we will not get it from Russia. Right now we're still getting some oil from Russia, very little. But we'll be getting even less then because they're going to supply for China. That leaves you. Well, they've announced they're going to sell less to, to to Europe and natural gas as it's going to China and themselves. I mean, this is a recipe for massive price increases on top of dollar devaluation. Very yeah, this, this this natural gas supplied to Europe by Russia. Uh, this is drastic because they get cold winters over there. And now when uh, when Gaddafi. Uh, cuts off all of the oil to Europe. Qaddafi's uh, oil doesn't come to America. Yeah, it mainly goes to it Italy. Goes to Europe. Mainly goes to Italy. Yeah, at, yeah, most of it to Italy. Can you imagine 1.6 million barrels being cut off tomorrow morning if they oust Qaddafi and he blows up their oil wells? It's already being slowed. Uh, it just gets crazier by the minute. Medvedev, speaking of Russia, was in the AP yesterday uh, saying that, uh, I guess we're not going to skip this break. Um, yeah, let's kill this break, John. Yeah, I'm going to kill that break, network break. Uh, this is so important. But, I mean, there's Medvedev saying this could go on for decades in the Middle East.
Oh, yeah, this is just the beginning. What you saw in Egypt is only the tip of the iceberg. Now, of course, it's spread to Libya, and the other countries over there are scared to death. And we're our fifth, uh, sixth fleet, I guess it is, uh, which guards the uh, Strait of Hormuz in that area, and Iran, uh, all it close to that. This whole thing is an upheaval. All right, let's jam in some calls for this in the next five-minute segment. Then Corbis joining us for two. We shortened him today, but he'll be back with us for a full hour, joining us from Japan in the near future. Uh, let's go ahead and go to Ryan in New York. You're on the air. Thanks for holding. Hey, Alex, how you doing? I guess all right. I mean, at least we know what's going on, but I don't like it. Doing a great job. I love the show. All right, my uh, question for Lindsay, uh, what were your thoughts or any chatter from your contacts on... Uh, the Israeli oil that Stan Johnson uh, talks about and how that might play into the overall Mideast larger picture, or is that still a wild card? And uh, I'll take my answer off the air. Thanks. Yeah, there's oil everywhere else over there. Why not in Israel? I think there is oil in Israel. Absolutely. So he's asking uh, if you heard anything about that. I have not. Uh, but I suspect, since it's so close to all the other countries that have it, I suspect that Israel probably already knows it's there. Well, and Israel follows the Anglo-American uh, system empire model. So if we've not been using our oil, I would guess they would keep it as a strategic backup as well. Makes sense. Charlie in North Carolina. Charlie, you're on the air. Hey, guys. How you doing? Good. Welcome. Thank you, sir. Uh, question, I have two questions. My first question is, uh, in regards to Mexico. I know you've said Mexico is just going crazy right now. And I'm wondering if that ties in with any of the stuff that's going on in the Middle East or if that's a so, uh, totally separate. Well, the Middle East will exacerbate uh, the people live in tyranny in Mexico and in, 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 in government induced squalor. Lindsay, what's your take on that? Uh, by the way, I can't hear your callers, so you'll have to repeat the question to me, Alex. Oh, I'm sorry, Lindsay. He's asking how Mexico and the riots down there play into this. Oh, it'll play into it perfectly. I think the entire drug cartel down there, they're just using it as an excuse because Mexico has so much oil. And they want disruption everywhere. They don't want it in the Middle East. They want it across America with our school teachers. They want every kind of civil unrest that they can get because this helps them to bring on that new world order. So, yes, that's just one little tip of it, of it all in Mexico. Notice it's all happening at once because the world reserve currency, the dollar, is dying and it's and it's moving quicker. And so the globalists have been prepared for this. Getting, I mean, I had an article out of the Ottawa News today. Uh, dealing with the, the foreign troops to be used in the U.S. and Canada. I mean, they're getting everybody ready, Lindsay. Yeah, I warned people three years ago, Alex. You knew. I, I know. I produced six DVDs two and a half years ago, and I warned people that I had been told that all this was coming. But people wouldn't believe me and go out and get food and take care of things. But, yes, they have been planning this for years. In fact, I want to show people the article of their new listeners. It's Canada, U.S. Agree. To use each other's troops in civil emergencies, and it goes on, civil unrest. The U.S. Northern Command is basically under its continental security perimeter, under General Reinhardt, uh, taking over Mexico and Canada. The, the North American Army is now official. This out of the Ottawa Citizen. They're getting ready for World War III, folks. Uh, in fact, what did, what did Fromm and Mr. L have to say about war in the cards, Lindsay? Uh... Nothing except the Middle East. I was told that five months in advance that there was going to be a conflict over there. I was not told what nation it would be in. We know now that it's Egypt, and that was just the beginning. I think the reason they didn't tell me where is because they could have picked any one of those nations over there to start the conflict, and that will spread everywhere. But Egypt's the key. It's the biggest. Okay, uh, population-wise, uh, one of the more wealthy compared to the others. Uh, let's talk to Bill in Connecticut. Bill, you're on the air with Lindsey Williams. <clears throat> yes, hi, Alex. Hey. You know, I'm just I'm just wondering, and you had briefly touched on this the other day, is, you know, since we are the government, we the people, why are we standing for this? Why don't we just round these people up and try them for treason? Well, I'm doing my best to get people to take the states back through the Tenth and Ninth Amendment and to educate people. As Thomas Jefferson said, educate the people in liberty and history, and uh, corruption will van them like, you know, phantom mist in the morning. Uh, and so I'm here doing the best I can. I mean, I, I can only cover the information. I've been arrested protesting. I get death threats. I'm doing pretty much the most I can. I mean, I'm I'm 110 percent. 
understand, and I, you know, I appreciate all you're doing, but it just seems like everyone, all of us, are talking about this, like it's all a foregone conclusion. When, you know, you look at what David Ike's uh, talks about the pyramid. Uh, there's just a few at the top of this pyramid. I know, but but still, a lot of people are waking up. But still, the majority are, are only care about Justin Bieber and Hollywood and things. Now, if we could get big Hollywood people to come out on this, we could use the globalist propaganda channel to backfire. That's very close to happening, but they're threatened, they're scared. Uh, but if people stop worrying about Justin Bieber uh, and Lady Gaga, uh, I mean, the, the general public is in a trance. Uh, they, they've given themselves over to delusion. Lindsey Williams comments. They, it will be that way until it's too late, when they've finally gotten to the place that the grocery store prices uh, doubled and tripled and quadrupled. The dollar begins to collapse. You're paying seven, eight dollars a gallon at the gas pump. By that time, uh, they will basically have the population where they want them. Right now, there's still time to do something about it. It's because of programs like yours, Alex. And you've got a listening audience that is phenomenal. Believe me, I've never seen the like of what happened as a result of yesterday's program. And in the next little short segment, we're going to give out the number and website if folks want to pre-order the production that's coming out in the next few weeks in the Middle East. The rest of the story, Lindsey Williams. Uh, was that Bill we were talking to? Okay, Bob in Texas, you're on the air with Lindsey Williams. Yeah, you got a great show. I uh, appreciate everything you do. And I worked in Prudhoe Bay for many years and was out on Gulf Island doing test wells and over close to the National Wildlife Refugee was told to, I had to sign documents, um, disclosure documents. You know, you were never here. You don't know anything about it. My question to Lindsay is, do you really think that the Saudis and the Middle East are going to cut the oil off completely to us? Because that sustains their way of life. That supplies money to their war. What he's saying is it's going to be disrupted, and because of dollar devaluation, it's going to cost uh, so much it's prohibitive. So that will put pressure, causing development. That, I mean, that's a simplification, uh, Lindsay, when you say they're going to completely cut it off, right? Well, when the civil unrest gets so drastic in places like Saudi Arabia, uh, United Arab Emirates, other places, every place that produces oil over that one. The king just like handed out tens of billions of dollars to stop unrest today in Saudi. Yeah, and, and once uh, once this gets to that point, and they blow up oil wells, they blow up uh, uh, transmission lines and all the rest, they won't be able to produce it like they're doing it right now. That, and that by the way, we won't get it. let me just throw this in before we go to break, because this is so important. Um... Well, we'll just come back with a point on the other side because I forgot it. That's why I interrupt because I want to get that point in there. It was super important. Oh, yeah. The, the king left France from his pleasure, pleasure palace back. He's so worried. Okay, final segment with Lindsey Williams. Lindsey, I've got to tell you during the break. Next Tuesday, 1230 uh, to 2 p.m. Central Time. That's 1130 uh, to uh, 1 o'clock your time. You're back on with us next Tuesday, okay? Thank you, Alex. Let's lock that down now. Because obviously folks want to talk to you. We'll mainly take calls then and get into some of the other areas you haven't been able to cover. Uh, we got Stephen. Uh, uh, now we got a bunch of other people coming up throughout the week, later in the week. We got uh, James Corbett coming up next. Uh, and then I do have a surprise guest coming up tomorrow. I'll tell you about that at, after the bottom of the hour break. So stay with us on that front. Uh, right now, uh, let's jam in a few final calls here quickly. Well, before I do that... Uh, Lindsay is producing a special DVD video next week. It should be out in the next few weeks. If you want to pre-order it, you'll get it in the order uh, that your uh, order is received. You can call 888-799-6111, 888-799-6111, or prophecyclub.com. And obviously, as we get closer to the release of it, uh, you'll be able to order as well. And Lindsay's back on with us next week. Uh, but uh, let's jam in now. Uh, well, finishing up, is Bob still there from Texas? He's gone, but there he is—a guy that worked in that very area where you worked, and they're not a lot. I mean, that's big secrets. How much oil's really there, Lindsay? Yes, exactly. We have it all over the country. They know it's there. They've known it's there for a long time. Now they'll be able to produce it once they have created the unrest and the crisis they want in the Middle East and other oil-producing countries. Let's jam in a few final calls. Sec in Missouri, and then Miles in Hawaii. Go ahead, Sec. Good day, John. Uh, my question is for Lindsay Williams. I was curious if his source ever spoke to him about the containment grid and the contingency grid when they are going to raise the gas prices. The okay. containment grid and the contingency grid on gas prices, Lindsay. Oh, well, 
the gas prices, of course, are going to go up, up, up. I'm not quite understanding his question. Are you talking about price controls? What do you uh, uh, educate us what you're talking about, SEC? Um, host cities and then um, derivative cities and sister cities. Uh, does he have any idea from his sources how they're going to spread this across the United States? Are you talking about lockdowns of cities? Well, no, I'm talking about the gas pricing structure. Um, for instance, you know, they test market a lot of their ideas in certain areas of New York, places like Ithaca, and then they roll them out into other cities. Are they going to do something like this? Are they going to have a host city when the oil crisis hits and then spread it out into the other cities around the United States? Lindsay? I don't think you'll be any safer in one part of the country than you are another. Uh, I, I have not heard that they're going to do it one city at a time. I believe that whenever this crisis gets so great in the Middle East and they can't supply the oil yeah. groups, uh, at that point, they'll just raise the price everywhere. Yeah, Sec, thank you. We're almost out of time. Uh, the way oil works, folks, is that they increase the prices when they have a glut by buying up refineries and shutting them down or cutting production. That came out in AP lawsuit to get the documents on the big five oil companies uh, 2001 for their meetings in 95. Uh, the reason you pay more in a place like New York or a place like L.A. is because there's harder transportation to bring it in. Plus, the real estate costs are more, so the gas stations cost more to own and operate. That's the main reason you see big increases in certain areas compared to others. Like if you're in South Texas, right next to the oil refinery, you're going to be paying the lowest prices in the country. Correct, Lindsay? Yes, and the reason you see it in California, for instance, is because of California law that states that they must have the fuel refined to a certain state yes. to put in all those additives. And with the diesel fuel, they can't allow yeah. any of the contamination. This is state law that require, that yes. makes the price so much higher in California. we got one minute left. Real quick comment or question from Miles in Hawaii. Aloha, go ahead. Aloha, Pastor Lindsay and Alex. Um, on a spiritual basis, I just want to, we're dealing with principalities of darkness besides the physical men at the power elite level. And I just wanted to ask, can we get like momentum for a prayer cover for everybody? Yes, we should pray that this nation and the world repent. As the Bible says, seek God's face and repent and he will heal our land. Correct, Lindsay, and we'll talk more about it next week. Set your spiritual house in order as quick as you can. Get out on your knees after the Alex Jones show there in your room and tell Jesus Christ you won't accept him as your Savior. Be born again and set your house in order. And get the discernment and the blessings and everything that comes with it. Why do you think this country's been so blessed? We're not perfect, but we were good, Christian, Puritan nation. Lindsay, we'll see you back next Tuesday right in the middle of the show. God bless you. Talk to you again soon.